Welcome to today's episode of the Top Producing Zone podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Michael Jin. Shane and I are stoked to welcome Justin Colby to the show today. Justin is the founder of the Science of Flipping podcast and the Science of Flipping coaching program. Now, he's an incredibly successful and active real estate investor, having flipped well over 2,200 homes in multiple markets over his career to date. He's a coach and mentor to thousands of clients on how to become a real estate investor. And he's also a recognized national public speaker, having been featured on Entrepreneur Magazine, Fox, CBS, Amazon, among other things. So Justin, it's, it's our first time meeting, but I know you and Shane know each other well, and it's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Right on. I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys having me. So one of the things maybe we can start off with first, Justin, is I know you, you've had a, like a successful, what, 15 plus year career up to this point. Like maybe we could start off and have you share a little bit more about how you got into real estate and then how that changed into real estate investing. Yes. Yeah, so I started as a realtor um, and I was selling new home builds and it was just not my jam. Uh, I made a lot of money out of the gate. The real estate market crashed in 07, 08. So did Justin Colby. I uh, lost my home to foreclosure, was sleeping on a couch. The repo man took my car. I mean, it was awful. Um, and so from there, I loved real estate. I didn't like being an agent. And I know the audience is agents, but I loved real estate. And so I went into a different direction, which was more transactional real estate is flipping. Um, and now has accumulated a bunch of wealth and doing 10 to 20 deals each and every month across the nation. Didn't start out that way. Started out with hustling, calling realtors, trying to find a deal on the MLS uh, that had enough margin to buy it and flip it really quick. Um, and then again, I've done almost 2,300 deals across the nation in this 15 year career. Um, and ironically, how it all started with calling realtors I now, even as of today, bought and sold another deal off the MLS, calling a realtor about their listing. Um, and so it comes full circle, ironically. That absolutely is like full circle for you. And I, I, and I assume like over the course of your career, there's been just a lot of ups and downs and a lot of learnings. Um, what would you say, like, if you reflect on your real estate investment career, like what are some of the biggest challenges you faced? And how did you kind of overcome those? Like anything, I mean, right now we're in a market shift, right? So, you know, I think that's a challenge for everybody, realtors included, right? Interest rates are going high. Buyers can't afford the same type of mortgage that they used to be able to afford. Um, and so as someone who invests in real estate, I have the same challenge, right? Like my loans to buy rentals is too high to make a lot of these rentals work. The fix and flips, I need a bigger margin because most likely the lenders are going to come back short on appraisal. And so I need to make sure I have room for that. Um, and that poses a challenge for realtors, right? Cause when I'm listing it as, with a realtor, I need to make sure that it's going to sell. And I don't just have a realtor that, you know, is a yes man. Oh, I'll list it, whatever you want. Right. I mean, there, there's a lot of great realtor. Well, there's a very few great realtors, but there's a lot of mediocre realtors who will just say yes to get the listing. But the reality is they shouldn't even take it because they know it will never sell at that price point. But that's just one thing, right? The market conditions. Another thing is contractors as a real estate investor. I, I had a home this week that I went in and, and hired a mold remediation company and 10 days later, the home was taken down to the studs. They didn't ask for approval. They didn't get a sign off on it. They didn't give me a bid. They literally took the whole down, the whole home down to the studs. Um, so contractors is another challenge as a real estate investor. Um, you know, Raising money isn't a challenge for me, but it can be perceived as a challenge to have enough money to buy the amount of deals that you want to buy. But, you know, no matter what sector, whether you're a realtor or an investor, there's always challenges. For me, I would rather be a transactional investor than a realtor because my intention is always to build wealth. Realtors should be doing the same, by the way. They should be buying every single listing that would fit as a good rental. They should be the investors. And funny enough, I, I sell most of my wholesale deals that I, I'm not going to buy myself. I'll sell them to realtors because there are a lot of realtors that understand building wealth. It's, I don't want to say it's easy, but not terribly difficult to make a lot of money, you know? Um, but what is difficult is the mindset of building wealth because people latch on, including me, for years I latched on to that $25,000, $30,000, $40,000 payday versus put that in a portfolio and build wealth and become bankable. And so I'd encourage all realtors out there, you need to become investors immediately if you aren't already, 
you need to learn how to do it the right way. Don't just figure because you're a licensed realtor, you know. Um, there's a lot of people that have gotten hurt in the last six months because of the interest rate hikes. They thought they knew what they were doing. They didn't. Um, there was even more people that made way too much money over the last five years, not knowing what the hell they were doing. But because the market was such an incredible market, everyone in the world was making money. So if you're listening to this and you didn't make money in the last five years, I'm going to encourage you to go to a different job, do something else. Because the last five years up until the last six months was a windfall of money. Um, and so now it got real. Now the real people, you know, Warren Buffett says something about when the, you know, when the tides go out, we'll see who's standing naked. And that's what's happening. There's a lot of people that are going BK, right? That just can't withstand what's currently happening. And so there is a process, there is a system. I just love real, I'll never quit real estate. So that was kind of a long answer. I don't know if it exactly answered your question, but uh, I can go off for days about this. No, I, I think it definitely did. And it's funny, like Shannon and I were chuckling. I was looking at Shane, we were both chuckling when you were talking about contractors. Because uh, they they definitely are a challenge, and I think you know we had a few investment properties last year, and we got into trouble on one of them because of contractors. And I think one of the big lessons learned for us was just to make sure like you have to have a solid, concrete plan going into any kind of flip that you do. What what happens in these market changes is the people that have been around and seen some shit before, they actually make it. They a lot of times they'll flourish, right? Like my business is rolling right now. And it's because you're not a newbie. You didn't just get started when the economy was booming. You didn't just fall into this windfall of money, right? And so you know how to pivot, you know how to adapt, you know how to get creative, you know, and the challenge, and I don't mean to discourage people who are just getting in, everyone should be getting in right now, right? So if you are listening to this, I'm actually incentivizing you to get in. Like, this is when you get in, because this next 24 months is gonna be a huge, huge, huge win for those that are really playing full out in the real estate space, both as realtors and investors. Um, and so this is not meant to be discouraging at all. In fact, this is meant to fire you guys up because like I said, the next 24 months, there's going to be so much freaking opportunity. If you are willing to hustle and put your helmet and shoulder pads on and get on the field, you can make more money than you probably have ever made before. And in my hopes as an investor, you can build more wealth than you currently have and, you know, start the process of that whole wealth accumulation. I want to dig into that a little bit, Justin, like you you, you made a comment earlier. You said, you know, like just because you're a real estate agent doesn't mean you necessarily know how to get into the real estate investment game or how to be successful, right? So at, for people that are getting in right now, can you share a little bit about like, what is your process? Like, how do you go about identifying, evaluating like potential opportunities? What skill sets do you feel like people do need to pick up to be successful in this space? It's not as simple as just saying what skill set. I mean, obviously you have to learn how to negotiate. You need to understand how to underwrite deals and look at, you know, after repair value and what, you know, rehab cost is ultimately going to be. So it's a longer answer, right? But there is a process to finding the deals, negotiating the deals, doing the follow-up. Um, if you're going to wholesale it or if you're going to flip it or if you're going to buy and hold it and understand the exit strategy, if you're going to buy it subject to or create a seller finance note. So there's just more like I, I, as a coach, right? I coach people to be dynamic real estate investors, not one trick ponies. I wholesale. I love wholesaling. But if wholesaling is the only thing you do, then you're just not going to make as much money as you possibly could, right? You really want to have diverse exit strategies, wholesale it, flip it, buy and hold it. Because if you do that, then you can get more creative on the acquisition and it makes you a better salesperson, right? Just coming up with a low offer and just hoping that the seller is going to take it, um, it's not really a strategy, right? We went through that. Hope's not a strategy. So the more you can have an exit, the more you can view an exit in different ways, the more opportunity you'll have on the acquisition. I went right in 2005, right into new home sales, making boatloads of money, like I, but I had no skill set. And, and so Michael, I think that's what you were talking about. Like I sat behind a desk, I took 10 to 20 offers every single day. I chose the highest one. I made a lot of money. Like there, I was a baboon, like anyone could have done it, right? Like I was not, so when the market turned, I had no skill set to rely on, none. I didn't know how to canvas a, a market. I didn't know how to canvas a neighborhood. I didn't know how to promote myself. I didn't know how to sell. So I lost it all. And, and I would say, you know, marketing is senior to sales, but you need to understand both. Whether you're a realtor or an investor, you have to understand how to market yourself and how to sell. Um, and you know, that's a lot of the print. The reason why I have four coaching calls a week in my coaching program is because 
there are really strong pillars of this business. And those are two of them. So how do you like, and I think like part of the thing, what you're saying, Justin, is like with these, with these skill sets and marketing skill sets, part of it is kind of, you just kind of, you have to learn by doing right. And being able to fail fast, I would imagine. Um, so as you're kind of going through this and you're doing this, um, sometimes it's hard for people to, you know, overcome or accept that failure or that, or that they failed at something like, how do you, how have you helped yourself to like develop a mindset to be able to, you know, work past that and move past that? It's perspective, right? Um, I've taken massive losses in my career, right? I've lost seven figures on development play. I've lost quarter of a million on a high end million dollar flip. I mean, I just, you know. But it always comes back to perspective. Um, first, do you have an ability to go make more money? And if the answer is yes, then don't get all caught up on the one loss because you can always go make more, right? You're not an employee. You can always go make more. The, the challenge with employees is that, you know, they're usually on a salary. So when they lose money, that's, that's kind of it, right? But for us, we have the ability to go make more. The other thing is to recognize perspective. You know, to be extreme countries like Haiti, um, you know, in third world countries where they don't even have clean drinking water and we lose some money on a deal and we want to quit and give up. It's just really about perspective. Like your friends are going to still love you. Your family is going to still love you, you know, keep pushing forward because if you get caught up on the one deal that you lost money on, then you're never going to do anything again. Right. And so failure is a part of this game. It's a must. It's basically a requirement. Like you can't win without failing. I heard a say, saying recently, you can't win a championship with a clean jersey. And I love it. Like even saying it gives me shivers. Like I was like, that's a great fucking quote. Um, yeah, that's it. And, and so the other thing is, I think this comes from Tony Robbins, but I have my own take on it people overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in 10. If you were to ask me whether I would keep going after 12 months, um, obvious I did, but like I only did two deals in my first 12 months. I made $7,000, right? Like very easy for me to say, okay, this isn't for me and go somewhere else. Um, but I had this vision of at the time making millions, right? That was my big, like, dude, if I can just make some millions, and now, like, I'm saying shit like I'm going to be a billionaire through real estate. And I'm being vocal about it on, you know, podcasts and on stages because I've gotten, I don't want to say I'm really close, but pretty close to Grant Cardone. And, and as much as I love the man, like, he's nothing special. And if he can do it, I can do it. Right. Now, the key to that is I didn't put a time expectation on when. I didn't say in 10 years or 20 or 30. I didn't say by the time I'm 70. I just said, I'm going to be, and if I can just keep going, then listen, if I called my shot to be a billionaire and I end up at 500 million, am I really going to be pissed off? I mean, let's, let's be honest about it. Right. And so the, the improper result expectation, the improper time expectation about the result you're trying to achieve, that is the ultimate killer. Well, there's two fear and then improper time expectation. So I tell anyone here, quit your nonsense about your expectations, right? And when you're going to achieve it, right? If you just do what you know to be the right thing to do over and over and over again, every day, every month, every year, you will win right now. You also need to be around others that can pave the path. So like, for example, people, I have a coaching program. It's called the science of flipping. If you want to know more about it, go to my Instagram, the Justin Colby. Go to the Justin Colby, send me a message, say you heard me on the podcast. But I say that because I just paid $120,000 for a coach for me last month. Well, in, in uh, February, 120 grand, one coach, one person. And it's because I understand I need to get to a place that I don't have experience getting to. I need a roadmap. I need someone who has been there before. I need someone to give me a flashlight on this journey I'm on. Right. And for those that just think they're going to go out and create this unbelievable income and life in business, but don't have someone holding their hand or giving them the flashlight to the path, I just think it's silly. Right. You know, there are the absolute outliers, the Steve Jobs creating Apple. No one ever did it. Great. He did it. You know, 
Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, there are outliers, Elon Musk and SpaceX and Tesla, like, yes, sure. But those aren't even the one percenters. Those are like the one percent of the one percent, right? That's what I'm trying to say. The one percenters, the me, the you, we're hiring coaches. We're a part of masterminds. We're a part of people that can show us a further path because they've been there and done it. It's just crazy to me to think that people in, in the entrepreneur space and realtors are entrepreneur, period. Like, can't tell me anything else besides you guys are entrepreneurs that you just try to just try to do it. I'm just going to go out there and make a quarter million dollars. What are you talking about? You don't even know what you're doing. Well, and, and the other the other thing I want to add is ju just in one thing that you were saying earlier about having people pave like the road in front of you, seeing that example to see what's possible. That reminded me of something interesting because as we're talking about entrepreneurship, like for me, I think when I was growing up, I wasn't exposed to a lot of entrepreneurs. And so for me, it was like this, th the idea of entrepreneurship was this kind of like nebulous concept, right? And I always thought like either you, you were born to do it or you, or you weren't, right? Yeah. And then I think in college, like I, my parents grew up just taking the, the corporate track until my dad lost his corporate job. And then he had to go figure out a way to take care of family. And then so he started going and building out his own business, especially in, in China. And then now for me, like starting that own, my, my journey myself and working with like people like you, working with people like Shane, it's it's interesting because I've come to see it really much more as a mindset and a skill, like kind of sort of like a muscle that you develop and you grow and you strengthen over time versus something that just comes potentially naturally to one person or another. It is 100% that, right? You're trying to achieve something you've never achieved before, right? Like that'd be like a bodybuilder saying, I'm trying to gain 50 pounds and weigh more than I ever have. Well, you got to do different things. You got to work those muscles out, right? You got to eat differently, work out differently. So when people in any space, I, it, again, not even real estate, like it's just, it's mind boggling that people don't understand to get to where you've never been before. You need a roadmap. You need a process. You need a flashlight on that path. And for you not to invest in yourself to get there is insane to me. It just is insane. Well, I was going to say like part of it is like if you don't really have a roadmap or a plan, really, you're just kind of living in your dream still. And I think a lot of people stay in dreamland um, and, and they just spend all day fantasizing about that without really taking action to do it. But, you know, the other thing and Justin, you and I were talking before we started this recording a little bit is, you know, I'm looking at your Instagram and, you know, you have fun reels out there about your personal life. Like girl, dad is a hashtag. Check out that reel. It was awesome. I, I watched it a couple of times. Um, but it obviously to me, it shows you also have a way to like, you know, you're, you're going after your entrepreneurship, you're building out your business, but you also have a very strong sense of family and other balance in your life. Yeah. Like, has that been difficult for you to, to find that balance and manage it over the course of your career? Like, what have you done to help you along that path? Great question. And the reason why I would say no, for the most part is because I was single for the vast majority of my entrepreneur journey. So it is very easy to be selfish and only do what I want to do when you don't have a wife or children or anything like that. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, since being married three years ago and having a two year old daughter, um, the challenge isn't. The challenge is more self-imposed because I want to be so present as a father and as a husband. It's not that they give me my wife is beyond supportive. Right. Like last night I was in my office till almost nine o'clock doing a training for 200 people, et cetera beyond supportive there. It's more just, I want to be more present and, and listen, I do a great job, but I always want more, right? So for example, I spent the entire morning with my daughter and my wife today. You are my first work call. Well, second work call, right? Um, and so I, I am definitely present, but when you have a two-year-old baby girl, you're just like, if, if I had my druthers, it, the only thing I'd be doing is just playing with her and whatever, but you know, she deserves more. I deserve more. My wife deserves more. And so Daddy still got to bring home the bacon, right? I call myself the lion of my tribe. I got to go hunt and, you know, kill. And so we can all eat. And um, that includes, you know, vacation, but it includes nice stuff. And it includes a lifestyle that is very fun, right? And so I just believe in having an, you know, exceptional life. Like why play anything less? And so that the challenge is more self-imposed because I just would prefer to be hanging out with her. Uh, but besides that, I, I haven't had a bad time at all. I mean, I think it's intentional though. So I talk a lot about time. So there's, uh, and everyone should write this down CIA. If you've never heard of CIA before, uh, you have now, and I'm not talking about the government agency. 
I'm talking about commitment, intention, and action. And that will bring everyone success because if you commit to what you're trying to do um, and you're intentional with the time you're spending, then you just need to take action. So the five pillars of success that I have, and, and I would bet if you asked Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, Warren Buffett, any of the ultra, ultra, ultra successful, they would agree with these five pillars. First, you have to decide what you want and who you want to be. You have to make that decision. That is the p first pillar. Second pillar is you need to commit to it. Second pillar is what breaks a lot of the time. Third pillar is you need to take massive action. Fourth pillar is you need to be extremely uncomfortable. As we were just talking about, if you're trying to achieve something you've never done, you're outside your comfort zone. And the fifth pillar is, um, I just did four. I did um, be extremely uncomfortable. And then the fifth pillar is what we were talking about, the time expectation. Remove all time expectation on results. That might be the most important part because Elon Musk didn't become a billionaire. You know, I did, I gave the stats, I was speaking on stage in front of about 500 investors and Warren Buffett's stats about when he made his first million, when he made his first hundred million, when he made his first billion, you know, he didn't become a billionaire until he was 55 years old, but he started investing in stocks at 19. Not many people have that much fortitude to just keep their head down, keep going. Right. Um, it, but that's what it takes. Right. Um, Jeff Bezos started his stuff in 85. Well, if you just do the math, you're about 40 years into that bad boy right now. Jeff is largely the richest person on the planet at this point. But, you know, Bill Gates, right, all, all the stories um, is they didn't have a time expectation to reach this, right? They just went. Elon Musk, SpaceX still isn't where it needs to be, right? I mean, it's, but he'll get there because he doesn't put this time I need to be there in the next year or five or 10. He just says, I'm going to get there, right? So if you adhere to these five pillars of success, you're going to win. And that's why I say the fifth one might be the most important. Um, because, you know, the commitment breaks typically because how uncomfortable it is to get to the next level to get to where you want to be. That's where your commitment typically breaks. But if you decide what you want and you decide who you want to be, and I say this from stage a lot. I'm not talking about what's your why. Why are you doing this? Yeah, everyone's going to say they're fucking children. Get over it. It's everyone's answer, okay? So move on from that. Um, this is really make a decision of the life you want. What are you trying to achieve? Who are you becoming? Who do you want to be? Make that decision because then your commitment will attach to it because you can see it. You made a decision and then you're willing to be uncomfortable. But if, you're, if you can't and you're like, I don't know, I just want to make a lot of money, bro shit gets uncomfortable like this real estate market right now and you're going to quit. You're going to go do something else, you know, and good riddance, right? I mean, I don't need any more competition. You guys don't need any more competition, right? So um, those five are big. I think that's, that's a really, that's a really neat and strong, I think, mindset shift. I think a lot of people may not be comfortable with. Um, and I think right now it's, it's like, if you know what it is, who you want to be, where you want to be, that, who you want to be and what you want to accomplish that kind of ultimately ends up being your identity right so then it's like when that becomes your identity then everything all the actions you take every day are driven by that and it almost sounds like from that perspective then the time bound almost kind of takes care of itself yeah and that's that's exactly right you just keep doing i just hired a new guy uh five weeks ago young athlete you know good looking dude well spoken comes from a great family all the the things that like kind of intangibles that like you just kind of beg for, but obviously he's had a lot of success in his life. And so he's all fired up his first month and he's not achieving the results he wants. And like, calm down, junior, right? Like if you just work the system and the process that I'm teaching you and training you on, you will get there. And lo and behold, week five, he gets his first deal, sold it today. He's going to make $8,000. And this is a 21 year old kid still in college. So it's like it, it it's always about that time expectation, right? Because it implodes in your head and you're like, oh, I suck at this. Maybe it's not for me. Maybe I should do something else. But if you just believe in it and you have someone like myself or you guys who believe in that person and you see them and you say, I believe in you. I know you can get this done. Remove everything and just keep going, going forward. They'll get there, right? So now he's all fired up. I mean, he's like first deal five weeks. And, and by the way, when I have students that get a deal in five weeks, it's incredible. I mean, eight grand in five weeks, like that is a lot of money to a lot of people, right? Like that is nothing to shake a stick at. Um, and you can do that every week in my space, 
Like that is a very weekly number, right? One person can make eight grand a week very easily. And I say easy, you got to work, but you get my point. Um, and I imagine like, you know, like with no time bounds, as someone is working towards doing their first deal, whatever it is they're working on, they accomplish that first thing. But I think then sometimes what they don't realize is it takes a lot of time to hit that first thing. But then one, once you accomplish your first result, then you have a repeatable pattern, right? And then the second and then the third and then the fourth. And momentum. Momentum is a very real energy. You get that first deal and it is the very best time to get your second deal. Like the second you get that first deal, you go run as fast as you can to the second one because that momentum, the, co the confidence you gained, the energy, you realized what you did well, you realized what made that one work. You can replicate it to your point, Michael, like momentum is very real. Like, uh, ironically, he has two more uh, offers out today because he's so excited. And I like, see. So I think um, we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up with you, Justin. Really appreciate kind of all the time you spent with us today. And we always used to like to, we always like to ask our like our guests one one question to wrap up the interview is if you were starting your real estate business today with all that you've learned, all that you've done, um, what would you do differently and how would you go about building a brand new business today? I don't know if I would do it differently. It's interesting. As I said, uh, I started by calling realtors and now I'm still calling realtors 15 years later. In my space of investing, everyone says I can't find motivated sellers. Well, there's no higher sign of motivation than someone listing their property on the MLS. So they're everywhere. The challenge is they don't know how to sell. They don't know how to negotiate. They don't know how to create the deal. So I actually probably wouldn't change much, if anything. Um, you know, and the MLS is a great resource. Obviously, off market is is where people really believe they can make the most money. And at times you can. Um, but man, I would if, if I'm telling someone to get break into the space, A, I would tell you get a coach. B, you know, deals are everywhere. You're just not looking in the right place. You don't have a process. You don't have a system. You don't have a strategy. But they are literally everywhere, including the MLS, right? And so I'd so bang the MLS, start trying to get some deals off the MLS. That is awesome. So, and I know you mentioned this earlier, but just to wrap up, if people want to connect with you, learn more or get plugged in with your coaching, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah. Instagram, the Justin Colby at the Justin Colby. And then also Justin Colby, Colby TV, Justin Colby TV. So you can ask me anything you want on Instagram. I answer the questions. It's really me. It's not some bot. Um, so at the Justin Colby. Awesome. Thank <laughs> you.